Chapter 6, Lesson 8, Essential Question. How can you use addition or subtraction to describe a pattern or create a sequence with fractions? So looking right here, we have a pattern or a sequence. Um, each of these individual digits or numbers is a term in the sequence. Now, if I said find the missing term, we would compare 3 to 5 and we would notice that um, 3 plus 2 equals 5. And from 5 to 7, we would notice that there's plus 2. And so the next one, to continue that, we would plus 2. And so our missing term in this case would be 9. And we would double check that by saying 9 plus 2 gives me 11. And so my rule for that pattern or sequence is going to be plus two. Now today's lesson is following the same concept, however, it's going to be using fractions. Here we have a pattern with fractions. We have one half, three fourths, one blank, one and one half. The first thing that we need to do is, in order to compare these, we need to have a common denominator. So we have a 2 here, a 4. This 1 is essentially the same as 4 over 4. And then blank, and then a 2. And um, this 1, any denominator and numerator that are the same number is equivalent to 1 whole. So what we need to do is find a common denominator. Well. I know that I can multiply my 2's to equal 4. And so I'm going to use the common denominator of 4. And then I'm going to rewrite all of the fractions that we have so that they have the common denominator. Here I have all of my fractions rewritten. My 1 half is equivalent to 2 fourths. I had to multiply them both by 2. 3 fourths and then 4 fourths because I'm using the denominator of 4, and as long as my numerator and my denominator are the same number, that is equal to 1 whole, blank, and then 1 and 2 fourths, because again, multiply 1 and 2 by 2, so that my bottom number ends up being 4. So now I need to compare them. So 2 fourths to 3 fourths, what is my change? It is definitely increasing, and it, the numerator is increasing by 1 and 1 fourth, because my denominator doesn't change. 3 fourths to 4 fourths, or 1 whole, again, 1 fourth. And so what would be 1 whole plus 1 fourth? Um, that would be 1 and 1 fourth. Does that get me to 1 and 2 fourths? Well, my whole number doesn't change, but my fraction increases by 1 fourth. So my rule would be adding 1 fourth. Now this is exactly our lesson today. We're going to be looking at patterns with fractions. You are going to need to work with common denominators, so make sure that you're writing equivalent fractions all with the same denominator. So this is what it looks like in a story problem. Mr. Patrick wants to develop a new chili recipe for his restaurant. Each batch he makes uses a different amount of chili powder. The first batch uses three and a half ounces. The second batch uses four and five six ounces. The third uses six and one six ounces. And the fourth uses seven and a half ounces. If this pattern continues, how much chili will he use in the sixth batch? So you can find the pattern by in a sequence by comparing one term to the next. First, you need to press pause, underline what you're being asked to find, and circle the important information do that. You should have underlined if this pattern continues how much chili powder will he use in the sixth batch and I'm actually going to double underline six so that we know how far we need to go and then I circled the first with three and a half second four and five six third six and one six fourth and seven and a half now I all I circled the first second third fourth so that I made sure that I kept my numbers in order so here they are in order, and so our first step is to write the terms 
as equivalent fractions using a common denominator. So I need to look right here at my denominators. I have a 2 and I have a 6 and a 6 and a 2. So what is a common denominator that I can use? Some of you may multiply 2 times 6 and use the common denominator 12. I, however, am going to use the common denominator of 6 because I can multiply my 2 times a 3 to get 6 and then I have less work because I don't have to change these fractions. Make sure that whatever you multiply your denominator by, you also multiply that numerator by. So press pause and rewrite these four fractions in these blue boxes as equivalent fractions. I would like you to use the denominator 6. So you should have wrote 3 and 3 6, 4 and 5 6, 6 and 1 6, and then 7 and 3 6. The next part of step 1 is to examine the sequence and compare the consecutive terms. Those are just means the ones right after each other to find the rule used to make the sequence. So if we look right here, um, we can see that the difference between 3 6 and 5 6 is 2 6 and the difference between our whole number 3 and 4 is 1 whole. So right there the difference is 1 and 2 6. Let's look right here. Um, well, 5 6 and 1 6, well 5 6, the next one up would be 6 6, so that's adding 1 6 to it, but that's another one. So this is where it could look kind of confusing, but if we had a number line right over here, it went, would go 5, 6, and then 6, 6, which 6, 6 is a whole, and then it would start over. So that's a whole, so then it would start over again. So, sorry, that should be a 6. So 5, 6, with 2, 6, there's 1, 2 would bring us back to 1, 6. So that would be 4. The 4 adding 1 would be 5, but because on this number line we're jumping past 6, 6, that 5 is going to become a 6, and then we have our 1, 6. So this one is the difference of adding 1 and 2, 6. And then, let's see, looking at the difference between 1, 6 and 3, 6, that difference is 2, 1 plus 2 equals 3. And then the difference between the 6 and the 7 is 1. So the difference is adding 1 and 2 6. Once we have our pattern, we need to answer step 2. We need to write the rule for it. So is the sequence increasing or de decreasing? We can say that it is increasing, meaning that it is going up. And so our rule is going to be add 1 and 2 6. And now that we have our rule, step 3 is to actually extend it. So we need to take 3 and a half, 4, 5, 6, 6 and 1 6, 7 and 1 half, and extend it. So 7 and a half is the same, remember, as 7 and 3 6. So 7 and 3 6 plus 1 and 2 6. If you need to add that over here, you may. If you know how to do it in your head, that's okay. We can go 3 plus 2 is 5. So 5, 6, and then 7 plus 1 is 8. And now we need to do our number line again. We're going from 5, 6 to 1, 6. Um, so let's just change this now to be 8 and 5 6 um, 5 plus 2 is going to be 7 6 which that's an improper fraction um, 8 and 1 is 9 but right here we can see that there's one group of 6 in that 7 6 so that's really going to be 10 and 1 6 so this is, let's count how many sequences, we, terms we have. One, two, three, four, five, six. And in our question, we were asked to find the sixth batch. 
and so he will use 10 and 1 sixth ounces in our sixth batch. In this example, we have the terms 1 and 3 fourths, 1 9 sixteenths, 1 and 3 eighths, 1 and 3 sixteenths, and then 3 and then 7 sixteenths and 1 fourth. So the first thing you need to do is write the terms in the sequence with common denominators. So we're using 4, 16, and 8. So if you wanted to, you could create a table like this till you found a common multiple. I do know that I can multiply 4 times 4 to get 16, and I can multiply 8 times 2 to get 16. So I want you to write these using the common denominator of 16. Press pause and rewrite these four and these two on this line with the common denominator of 16. So press pause and do that. Also, just to show you that if you had used a table like this, this is what it would have looked like. You could see 16 times 1, 8 times 2, and 4 times 4. You should have written the equivalent fractions of 1 and 12 sixteenths, times in both the numerator and denominator by 4, 1 and 9 sixteenths, 1 and 6 sixteenths, multiplying both the numerator and denominator by 2, 1 and 3 sixteenths, and then 7 sixteenths and 4 sixteenths, multiplying both the numerator and denominator by 4. The next step is to write a rule describing the pattern. So I can already tell that um, I'm going from 12 sixteenths to 9 sixteenths with no change in my whole number. So it's definitely going to be subtraction. And this one's going down, and so is that one. So what operation can be used to describe that increases? That's addition. What operation describes a sequence that decreases or goes down? That's subtraction. And so what is ours doing? Ours is decreasing, it's definitely subtraction. But how much are we subtracting? Nine or 12 to nine, well that is a difference of three, but if there, it's not just three holes, it's three sixteenths. Um, a difference from nine to six, is also 3, and it's the fraction, so 3 sixteenths. And from 6 sixteenths to 3 sixteenths, again, is a difference of 3 sixteenths. So our rule is minus 3 sixteenths. And now, the last step is to find the unknown terms. So continue subtracting 3 sixteenths as you need to fill in these three missing terms. Press pause and do so. So your missing terms, you should have taken 1 and 3 sixteenths minus 3 sixteenths, and that would have left you with one whole, which is the same thing as 16 sixteenths. And then you minus another 3 sixteenths, and you get 13 sixteenths, minus another 3 sixteenths, and you get 10 sixteenths, and then you get back into 7 sixteenths and 4 sixteenths. We could have also, right here, the 10 sixteenths you can reduce. 2 goes into both of them, so that would have been 5 eighths. However, the 10 sixteenths is fine. So if we look at the try this, I want you to press pause and see if you can write a rule for the sequence and then find the unknown term. And then also with B, they're telling you to start at 1 fourth and then add 3 eighths. You're still going to have to work with a common denominator for both of these, so press pause and try them out. On this last one, um, when you add 3 eighths to 5 eighths, you get 8 eighths. And so I just put a big 1 around it because 8 eighths is equal to 1. So that's why this last one is 1 and 3 eighths. Due to time, I'm quickly only going to show the answers I wrote down all of the equivalent fractions with the common denominators you should have used. I wrote down the rules and the final term and circled it. 
Make sure you work on your exit ticket, the on your own and problem solving sections.